Hello everyone, my name is Hai, application scientist from QNAMI. Today, I'm very happy to introduce the quantum microscope from QNAMI, which is called ProtosQ. It is a scanning nitrogen vacancy magnetometer. Scanning NV magnetometer is also a kind of scanning probe microscope. Instead of using a typical silicon-based cantilever in QNAMI, we fabricate diamond-based cantilever with a single NV defect embedding to the very end of the tip. It has a very high sensitivity. It can detect many field down to one atomic layer. And now you see the QNAMI ProtosQ. It is a desktop turkey solution. ProtosQ has a very small footprint. It includes a confocal optic module, which is stable and robust. Meaning once it is delivered, you don't need to realize optics anymore. It also including a closed loop AFM platform, which comes from our industry partner Horiba. So on top, we build the scanning NV measurement head. In order to perform scanning NV measurements, in QNAMI, we also develop quantum control hardware, microwave cube, as well as quantum control software, lab cube. Using this software, you can imaging scanning NV signal together with topography simultaneously. ProtosQ is developed based on the AFM technology from Horiba. So it also gives you unlimited extension possibilities. By replacing the scanning NV measurement head with a typical AFM measurement head, you can access to more than 20 different scanning probe method modes. It gives you unlimited potential to study the same material system using different scanning probe techniques. Scanning NV magnetometer is conceptually very simple. It includes only four key elements. A diamond cantilever with a single NV defect embedded in the very end of the tip a micro resource, a confocal setup, and also a scanning platform. Scanning NV magnetometer has three key advantages compared to other technologies. First, it has very high sensitivity. Its sensitivity can be down to one micro tesla, meaning you can detect one single atomic layer. It also has very high spatial resolution, better than 50 nanometers. The resolution in NV magnetometer is only depends on the distance between the NV center and the sample surface. And most importantly, scanning NV magnetometer is also a non-invasive and quantitative method. Using scanning NV magnetometer, it gives us uh, unlimited potential to see some structures we never able to see in the past. And here in this picture, you see the anti ferrite magnetic textures from bismuthi ferrite, which is published recently in Nature. Due to the anti ferrite nature of the sample, the street field is very small. It is only possible to be observed in real space by scanning AV magnetometer. Kinami ProtosQ is built in a very intuitive way. It also includes four key elements. On the left is probe holder with diamond tape installed. On the right is a micro resource. On top, we have a confocal optic module. In the bottom, we have a closed loop, fully optimized scanning platform. Very recently, on a similar bismuthi for example, we are able to image the spin sacral structure quantitatively using Kinan ProtosQ. So you can easily see the quality here is comparable with previously mentioned publications using a home built setup. QNAMI ProtosQ has a few key advantages. First of all, it is very intuitive. You only need to know little knowledge on quantum mechanics about AV Center. And it is very easy to use. We design the system in a plug and play principle. You can put in your example directly around the measurement. And most importantly, it is very robust and stable. The thermal drift rate is smaller than two nanometer per hour over a course of two days. 
and in the end, it is customizable. The software is programmed using Python. So the customer can do advanced applications by programming by himself. If you want to know more information about QNAM ProtoSQ, please download QNAM ProtoSQ for sure. Basic physics behind NV magnetometer is very simple. So during the scanning process on the magnetic surface, the green laser is continuously shining to the NV center to initialize the spin state, and it will emit red photons. The fluorescent signal contains spin information from the NV center. The ground state of NV center is spin triplet state. It includes a brighter MS equals zero state and two darker plus minus one state. In the absence of external magnetic field, the plus minus one state are degenerated. The, sep the separation between ground state and excited state is 2.87 gigahertz, which is called zero field splitting. By sweeping the micro signal and simultaneously collect the photofluorescent signal using a technology called optically detected magnetic resonance or ODMR, we can probe the transitions of the MV center using such technology. The resonance here is due to the transition between the ground state and the plus minus one state. In case there's any external magnetic field, the degeneracy from plus minus one state are lifted. In this case, by sweeping the microwave frequency, in the ODR mass spectra, we will observe two resonance drop in Florence due to the two different transitions from, from AV center. And the splitting in the spectra is proportional to the magnetic field along the condensation axis of the AV center. It is self calibrated quantum mechanically. The constant gamma is called gyro magnet ratio. It has value of 2.8 megahertz per gauss. The ODMR is the core of the scanning AV magnetometer. In ProtosQ, the most important image mode is called full B mode. Using full B mode, you can do quantitative mapping of your magnetic structures. In Kobe mode, at each pixel site, the ODR mass spectra is mirrored. The magnetic field along the NV quantization axis can be quantitatively de determined by this equation. And here you see the full quantitative mapping of the anti ferromagnetic spin textures in this multifarad using ProtosQ. In full mode, the integration time at each pixel site is normally a few seconds. It can measure magnetic field up to tens of Gauss. The only drawback is a longer imaging time. In full mode, all different magnetic field components are imaged. Here, depicted with different colors. However, you can only decide to measure one component using a fast imaging mode. The fast imaging mode in ProtosQ is called ISOB mode or control field imaging mode. In this mode, at each pixel site, the ODR mass spectra is not scanned. Instead, the micro signal is prefixed to one special frequency, which should relate to only one magnetic field component. At each pixel site, when the magnetic field is in resonance or near resonance with the electron spin transitions, we will observe a fluorescence drop. Using this principle, we can map the bismuthine ferrite signal using ISOB mode. And here you see the fluorescence mapping in the large area on the sample surface. So all the dark contours are corresponding to one prefixed magnetic field component in the sample. The only drawback of this method is its dynamic range is very short. It's only limited by the language of the ODR mass spectra, typically one to two Gauss. However, it is a very powerful fast imaging mode. Like within a course of 10 minutes, you can already have very good overview of your sample surface. Now, I would like to spend 10 minutes with you 
to give you a tutorial of using Protos Q from starting preparing the tape example until environment is done. The sample mounting in Protos Q is very simple. You just need to use a tweezer, grab in the sample holder, and insert it to the sample scanner. And now you see the sample holder together with the sample mounted inside the Protos Q. Depends on the sample size, you can use a small sample holder or a bigger sample holder provided by us. The large sample you can image using Protos Q is up to 1.5 inch in diameter. In Protos Q, we want to make the tip mounting as simple and safe as possible for Protos Q users. All the quantity levers we ship to customers are carefully quality controlled. We want to make sure they are all useful and not damaged by mishandling. Therefore, we created such a mounting station for Protosky users to make sure they can mount the tape in a very fast and safe way. We just need to take the probe holder, put to the mounting station, and lock it in position. And then open the case of the quantum lever from Kunami. Using the tweezer, take the sensor out of the case and put it gently on the rear edge of the mounting station. Push the small PCB a little bit and then turn it around. The last step is by self-guiding, put it to the end of the probe holder and lock it with the screwdriver. And now, you are done with tip mounting within a minute. After insert the probe holder into Protos Q, the next critical step is to align the tip optically to the confocal axis and perform a confocal scan of the quantilever. Using the built-in camera from top, we can easily see the quantum lever as well as part of the microwave antenna, which is tens of micron away from the quantum lever. In the quantum lever, this dark feature indicates the diamond pillar position of the quantum lever. In this step, we only need to open the laser spot indicator and move the quantum lever in the X and Y direction and make sure the image is focused. And then we switch the switch mirror on the microscope to the confocal path. We can perform the confocal scan around the quantum lever using QNAMI software, which is called LabQ. In this confocal scan, it is scanned line by line using the top scanner attached to the object lens. And here you see the bright spot indicating the MV position. So the bright feature around the edges are mainly due to the scattering effect. And we need to do one time click on the MV spot and press the optimization button. You see here, the MV position is automatically optimized. The, op the optimization is not only in X and Y, but also in Z to ensure during the imaging process, the confocal is stay focused on the AVIN center. And the next step is to align the antenna with respect to the quantilever to get an ODMR curve. 
in order to align the micro antenna with respect to the quantilever, here we use a SAT camera. In the SAT camera, you can clearly see the quantilever and also the end of the micro antenna. By zoom in to make sure they are staying in the same focal plane. And you can sometimes also use the top camera to ensure the lateral position. The next step is open the laser and run the ODMR spectra using the ODMR module in the LabQ software. You can preset the scan range in frequency and also the microwave power. It has internal embedded fitting function. You can fit the ODMR curve in different functions. Here we use double Lorentzian fit. And here, the depth in the ODR marker is called contrast. It is an important feature to ensure you have enough sensitivity. The typical value we can achieve with input Q is in the order of 15 to 25%, which is good enough for you to perform all ODR based measurements in the scan MV magnetometer. And now we finish the preparation of aligning the tip and the microwave antenna. We just need to land the tip on the sample surface and do scan every measurements using different modes. The first mode I'm going to show you here in the demo is called ISOB mode. For the ISOB measurement, we just need to use the main interface of LabQ software and the Put two important numbers to the ISOB measurement tab. One is the resonant frequency, which is a predetermined magnetic field component we want to measure, and also the microwave power. By simply clicking the measurement button, we can record in the forward and backward information simultaneously. So here you can see not only the fluorescent signal is imaged, we can also simultaneously record in the topography information during the scan process. It is always good to compare the forward and backward scan during the scan to ensure you have no hysteresis of your sample scanner. In order to show the speed, here I put a timer here. During the ISOP measurement, you can freely select the region you want to image by setting the X and Y coordinate here and also the pixel numbers during the image. And now you see after a few minutes, you already have a very good overview of your sample surface. The sample we used for this demo is bismuth ferrite. It has anti-ferromagnetic spin textures. You see in the end, you can also check the topographic information and compare with the MV image signal. That's it for SOB measurement. And now in the very end, I will show you how you can do a full beam measurement. Due to the time limitation, I already give you basic introduction and tell you one important feature for this full beam mode operation. To do the full beam measurement, you just need to open the full beam measurement tab and set up our desired experimental parameters such as scan speed and also the ODMR information, frequency range, microwave power, and so forth. And then we can just run the full beam scan. And in the LabQ software, there's a very nice feature. It is called self-optimization. Here you see an ongoing measurement of a full beam measurement. And in the end of this current scan line, the measurement will be paused temporarily. And in this case, the closed loop scanner on the optic lens will do a local small range optimization around the NV position to make sure we are stay focused. 
This feature, together with the rigid mechanical design of our AFM platform, it allows us to do a very long-term measurement up to 20 hours. And you see after the optimization process, the measurement continues in the first pixel of the next scan line. And with this gallery, I would like to end this tutorial. You can see over the past year, using Kinam ProtosQ, we are able to see not only ferromagnetic samples, we can also probe the anti ferromagnetic spin textures using ProtosQ. The magnetic field range on the sample ranging from mini Tesla down to micro Tesla range. And we believe there are still plenty of room in the bottom. If you are interested with our product, Feel free to contact us, and you're also welcome to follow us on social medias. And if you're interested in purchasing Kunan ProtoSQ, please contact our exclusive distributor, Horibra Scientific, in your local region. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello everyone. Uh, I do hope you enjoy the uh, the talk from us and also uh, have some better feeling about uh, how easy and flexible to use our ProtosQ for your research. And I'm very happy to answer uh, your questions. Um, I already have some from the uh, audience. So the first question from the audience is: uh, Is there any creeping in your scanner? Um, the answer is no, because uh, for our uh, scanning platform, we use uh, the most state-of-the-art piezo technologies, and we also operate our system in a uh, uh, closed loop. Um, together with a very rigid uh, mechanic design, uh, our system is uh, stable from the first minute you plug your sample inside. So you can do measurement from the first minute uh, when your preparation is ready. And the uh, second question, uh, what is the magnetic field range uh, which can be measured? Um, scanning MV magnetometer is a non-invasive and quantitative method for small field signals. Uh, it can measure magnetic field signals um, below tens of millitesla down to a few uh, microtesla, or even lower using uh, super advanced uh, application modes. Um, the, another question is so how, complete, how complicated is the tape change and what's the loud sample size of your instruments? Um, actually, I, I explained this question already in the tutorial and, and we allow you to put a sample um, into our instruments with a diameter of 1.5 inch and uh, 15 millimeter thick. And the tape change is uh, as easy uh, as you can see from the tutorial, and we want to ensure the safety of our probe um, during the operation of the users. Um, another question, can we send a test sample to your company for a measurement? And the answer is definitely yes, and we have an application lab, and uh, at the moment I'm live from our um, application lab uh, in Kunami near uh, Basel in Switzerland. Um, we offer a free demonstration for customer if you come with your sample for a few days measurements. Of course, now we are limited by the traveling and you are also um, uh, welcome to send us your sample to have a look, to have some understanding of the performance of the instruments and we can set up some uh, further discussions uh, in a remote way. Um, another question is, uh, uh, some customer, uh, some some one audience asked question: Can I build the instrument myself? Um, the answer is yes, of course. And but the problem is uh, is very time consuming, and uh, there's some risky inside. Uh, to build such a complex system, you have to be an expert in scanning proof platform, and also in NV magnetometer, and also you need to know uh, how to build uh, stable optics and also require hardware programming. And uh, for QNAMI ProtoSQ, 
It is a platform for a material scientist from day one. They don't need to spend any efforts on the instrumentation. And uh, basically there's uh, uh, no uh, maintenance uh, requirement for the instrument. You can have 100% uptime. And uh, yeah, you can do measurement from day one. Um, there's another asked question. Um, it's, uh, is there any other imaging tools can image anti ferromagnets in real space? Uh, definitely, yes. Um, um, before I answer this question, I would like to recommend you to also uh, watch our scientific talk in the, in the quantum sensing session, which is pre-recorded. They are explain uh, clearly about the state of art imaging tools for weak signal, uh, weak uh, magnetic signal imaging uh, method. And there's some uh, critical methods. They require a uh, complex infrastructure and uh, synchrotron. Uh, you can, uh, it also requires ultra low temperature, high vacuum. And Qunami Protoss Q is um, 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 a platform working uh, in ambient conditions. So you can just uh, plug in your sample and directly do the measurement. Um, the final question, um, is this a, a temperature stable? And uh, can I, uh, do I need the super stable temperature uh, conditions in my lab? And the answer is no. Uh, as I mentioned, we use uh, the advanced AFM platform from our industry partner, Horiba. So our, scan, our scanning platform is closed loop and very rigid. Uh, and we also using the auto track algorithm for the scanning NV measurements. Um, that's why um, uh, you don't need any uh, special uh, infrastructures for the measurements or standard lab condition uh, um, fulfill route. The requirement for operating uh, Qunami Protoss Q. Um, just uh, one more question is coming. Uh, how long do I need to wait to start the measurements? Uh, oh, actually, I explained already. Um, uh, since our uh, scanner is uh, uh, is uh, using the most advanced piezo technology, we don't have a, a, a creeping effect, and also we operate as a closed loop. So uh, you don't need to wait to the creeping, typically, uh, uh, which happens for the scanner, tube scanner based uh, AFM platform. Uh, you can do measurement from the first minute. And uh, the last question, uh, laser uh, alignment or maintenance uh, is required or not? Um, so uh, I explained in the talk, uh, whenever the system is uh, delivered and installed uh, in your lab, you can do measurement. And the laser module, optical module, you don't need to touch. Actually, we don't recommend you to touch it because it's uh, very rigid and uh, it can be stable over years. You don't need to realign any optics. And you don't need to know anything about uh, the, how to maintain the optical module and so forth. Um, so this is all the questions I can see. And of course, in the very end, uh, I would like to, uh, to, uh, to thank you again for watching um, this talk and also our tutorial. And in case you have any questions about our instruments, our quantum levers, or our technology uh, in general, you are free to contact us in all means. And we are also in social media. Uh, you are also welcome to, uh, to follow us on the social media. And uh, uh, in the end, I wish you a successful uh, conference at Quantum 2020. And I would like also take the opportunity to thank the organizer from Quantum 2020. Thank you very much.